Behind me is a 7 foot wide LED wall that I built for under $500. A giant LED display can add color and movement to your room, making it feel more lively and fun. You can use it to stay updated on important information like the time and weather, or just leave your favorite GIF looping as a unique art piece. I love using mine as a visualizer when I'm blasting my favorite music, but it's also really cool in the background of streams or video calls since it can mirror your PC screen. I'm Chris Parker, and in this episode of Tech Random, I'm going to teach you how to build your very own LED wall. We'll go through every step you'll need to build the panels, as well as my suggestions to make the project as beginner-friendly as possible. Then I'm going to teach you how to use WebSockets to communicate with the display over Wi-Fi. Even if you've never used a microcontroller before, this video is going to teach you everything you need to know. Let's get started. This project uses a lot of 3D printed parts. If you've never used a 3D printer before, then now is the best time to get into the hobby. I just got an Anycubic Cobra for $250, and it has some insane features like an auto-leveling bed that makes it a huge upgrade from the printer I got during my sophomore year of college. This is not sponsored, I'm just really impressed by the printer at such a competitive price. There are four different files you'll need to print. You'll need eight of the 6x6 for each panel, four of the 6x4, four of the 6x6 end piece, and two of the 6x4 end piece. Multiply that by four and you'll have enough for the entire wall. You'll need three and a half kilograms of black PLA for the whole thing. Although most of this project can be built in a couple of days, it took me almost a month to print all of the tiles I needed, so make sure you start printing before you get too far ahead. For each panel, you're going to need four 5 meter rolls of 150 pixel WS2812B addressable LEDs, a 5 volt 60 amp power supply, an AC wall plug, and an ESP8266 microcontroller. You'll also need a soldering iron, solder, 16 gauge wire, a wire stripper, duct tape, the 3D printed tiles, hot glue, a light diffusing cloth, a stapler, and large sheets of cardboard. In case you missed any of that, all these things can be found in the description along with written instructions over on my Instructables page. Before we get into the build, remember to leave a like on the video for the YouTube algorithm. When I started this channel, I was a college student, but now that I'm working full time as an engineer, it's really hard to find time to work on these videos. Remember to subscribe and ring the bell if you don't want to miss out on any future projects. I'm going to start by cutting the cardboard down to 48 by 21 inches. If you can get a cheap 4 foot level, it'll be your best friend for the duration of this build. Cutting each of the LED strips into 4 36 pixel segments was actually a lot of fun and only took about 5 minutes. I used two of the leftover strands at each end of the cardboard to make sure the strips were evenly spaced. Then I used my level to make sure each strip stayed straight the whole way across. If you're making your own, make sure you start with a connector piece. You'll always need to pay attention to the arrows on the strips and make sure you alternate the direction of each strip as you place them down. Once all the strips are down, you'll have a very satisfying sheet of pixels, but they won't be able to do anything until we wire them up. You can use whatever wire you want for this, but I just scavenged all the extra wire that came with the LEDs. Make sure you save at least one of these connectors for later though. The soldering was definitely the most tedious part of this project, but a good stripper and soldering station make quick work of it. We need to connect all the strips together in a snaking pattern so that we end up with one continuous strip. I used a bit of solder to tin each pad, then tinned the wires and touched them together with the iron. Make sure you use pliers since the wires will get very hot. Before turning off your soldering iron, take the connector we set aside earlier and connect it to the ESP8266. Red goes to 5 volts, white to ground, and green goes to D4. Now it's finally time to run our first test. I'm going to show you the whole process to make this project less daunting for beginners, so bear with me if you've done this before. Start by grabbing the Arduino IDE from the download section of their website. While it's installing, head to my GitHub link in the description and download the zip file. In the folder, open link.txt and copy its contents. Now open Arduino and go to File, Preferences, and Paste into Additional Boards Manager. If you already have stuff here, just separate them with a comma. Now go to Tools, Manage Libraries, and install the Fast LED Library. Once that's done, you can navigate back to the GitHub folder and open fastledtest.ino. Click Tools, Board, ESP8266 Boards, then select Lowlin Wemos D1 Mini Clone. Then go down to the port and observe the list of options. 
Plug in your ESP8266 using a micro USB cable. Close and reopen tools port and you should see a new option. Select that port and press upload. With the ESP8266 still connected to your computer, plug it into the LED panel and you should see a red LED running up and down the strip. Now that we know the individual pixels work, let's connect our power supply so we can drive all of the pixels at once. I cut three equal lengths of 16 gauge wire, about four feet long. Strip one of the ends and tin the tips. Then solder the red wire to five volts and the black wire to ground. Space these out as evenly as possible so you can get an even amount of power to each row of pixels. Then use small strips of duct tape to secure these wires down to the bottom of the cardboard and wrap the cables together where they meet in the middle. Now you can cut the other ends to the same length and strip them on the longest setting your stripper has. Twist each frayed end and bend them at a 90 degree angle. Before we can connect the power supply, we'll also have to take a standard AC power cable and cut the end off, exposing the three wires inside. You should see a white, black, and green cable if you're in the US. Strip, twist, and bend these cables as well. Then you can use a screwdriver to connect the green to ground, black to neutral, and white to live. Finally, attach the three red wires to plus V and the three black wires to minus V on the supply. Now we can run our test. With the ESP board disconnected from your panel, plug into your computer and open the sketch maxcurrenttest.ino. Click upload, and once the upload is finished, unplug the ESP from your computer and plug it back into the panel. Now you can plug the panel into power and verify that all of your LEDs are bright white. With the power supply tested, it's time to begin the final assembly. I laid out all the 3D printed tiles to make sure I had the right number of each part. The end pieces should provide clearance for the solder joints on each strip. Using a high heat hot glue gun, I apply four drops of hot glue to the bottom of a tile. Then press it firmly into the panel for about 10 seconds. I like to start at the bottom and work my way up one side so I can make sure each tile is square. With all the tiles attached, I used a box knife to trim down any excess cardboard and make the sides flush with the 3D printed parts. To add the diffuser, flip the panel onto a trimmed sheet of light box cloth. Using a stapler, secure the cloth to the back of the cardboard. Alternate sides as you move down the panel, making sure to pull the cloth as tight as possible for the best results. Once the sides are done, you can do the same thing at the top and bottom. Remember to cut a slit for the cloth to wrap around the power wires at the bottom. And just like that, you have your first wall panel done. To attach them to the wall, I used four large Velcro command strips per tile to make sure each one is secure but also removable. I mounted mine up against a corner, but you can also use a level to make sure your panels are straight. You're going to need four panels in total to get the complete seven foot wide wall, but if you only want to make one, that's fine too. I've had a single panel mounted for the past year while I procrastinated this, and it looked really good on its own. No matter how many panels you make, you're probably wondering how I'm driving graphics to four panels that aren't connected together in any way. YouTuber Tyler TimoJ made an amazing program called LED Matrix Control Software HD, or LMC SHD for short. This application allows you to mirror your screen, play GIFs and images, and even use your matrix as an audio visualizer. All the data gets sent to the USB port and can be read directly by our ESP boards. Unfortunately, there were a few issues with this software that needed to be addressed before I could put anything on the screen. In Tyler's repository, the vertical pixel orientation is completely broken and results in this messy image. Thankfully, since the software is open source, I was able to modify the code and fix this issue. I made sure to include the working version in the project files linked in the description below so you won't have to face the same problems if you make a display like this of your own. The other issue is that this program only outputs to a single serial port, but I have four panels that all need different data. On top of that, my LED wall is all the way across the room from my PC, and I don't want to run ugly cables everywhere. My solution to this problem was to use my existing Wi-Fi network and the WebSocket protocol to send the serial data wirelessly to each of the panels. WebSockets allow for real-time communication between a website and a user's web browser. Rather than the client having to continuously request new data from the server, this allows the server to push data to the client as soon as it becomes available. With multiple clients, we can program a server that receives a frame from the serial port 
then splits that frame into four separate frames and sends each frame to the correct panel. This all happens multiple times per second to give our display a high refresh rate and low latency. Let's first experiment with a single panel to prove that this will work, then we can test all four panels together. Plug the ESP8266 into your computer, then open the file Single LED Wall Receiver. You'll need to set your Wi-Fi SSID and password in here, then you can upload it to your board. Plug the ESP back into your panel, but don't power it on just yet. You're now going to take a fresh ESP8266 and plug it into your computer. Open the file Single LED Wall Source, and once again set your Wi-Fi SSID and password. Click Upload and wait for it to finish, then power on your panel. You should see a white light indicating power, followed by a red or purple light indicating a connection. Run lmcshd.exe and click Serial Connect. Select the COM port your ESP is on and set the baud rate to 921600. This is the fastest speed the ESP8266 can reliably communicate at. The matrix dimensions should auto-populate, but if they don't, enter a height of 36 and a width of 16. Go to Edit, Pixel Order, and change the following settings. Orientation, Vertical, Origin, Bottom Left, and New Line, Snake. Finally, we can press Start Capture and see a squished version of our screen being mirrored onto the panel. Getting all four panels to work is just as easy. You'll need the four ESP boards we used for the panels, plus a fifth board that we use for the server. Open the file Multi-LED Wall Receiver and set your Wi-Fi SSID and password. You'll also need to find the function WebSocket Event and modify the line WebSocket.SendTXT Device 4. Connect the first board, write Device 1, then Upload. Once that's complete, connect the second board and write Device 2 and Upload. Continue until all four boards are flashed with their proper device number. Go ahead and plug each of the boards into their respective panel, one on the left and four on the right. But wait to power on the display until we're done with the next step. Connect the final ESP to your computer and open the file Multi-LED Wall Source. Set your SSID, password, and click Upload. Scroll down until you see the line that says Set a Static IP Address. Open a web browser and enter 192.168.1.121 and you'll see this web page showing the connection status of each panel. Power on the display and wait for each screen to connect. If one or multiple aren't connecting, press the reset button on the side of the board and it will try to connect again. Once all the screens are connected, run lmcshd.exe and click Serial Connect. Select the COM port your ESP is on and set the baud rate to 921600. You'll also need to set the color mode to 16BPP. Running all four panels requires a lot of data over the network, and you're going to notice a low frame rate if you try running 24 bits per pixel. The matrix dimensions should auto-populate, but if they don't, enter a height of 36 and a width of 64. Go to Edit Pixel Order and change the following settings. Orientation Vertical, Origin Bottom Left, and New Line Snake. Finally, we can press Start Capture and see an exact copy of our computer screen on the LED wall. And that's it, you are now the proud owner of a Jumbotron. You can use the wall to watch videos or play GIFs, impress party guests with a music visualizer, or even challenge yourself to beat some video games at a very low res. In the future, I think it would be really awesome to use a webcam to turn this into an interactive art display. I also think it'd be cool to write code to display Spotify album artwork in real time. This project is far from over, so let me know down in the comments below what you would like to see me do with this wall in the next video. If you made it all the way to the end, I really appreciate you. I could not have finished this project without all the support you guys leave in the comments. Remember, the only thing limiting your creativity is your own imagination. So don't be afraid to try new things, take risks, and embrace the unknown. Stay creative, keep making new things, and I'll see you in the next video.